Hello, I am Rebecca and welcome to the Treasure Trove of Curios, my YouTube channel. In today's episode, I am going to show you some more things from the stuff category. So, I will start off with this vase. This I looked at and went, yeah, that looks like Australian pottery. Didn't have any big doubts about that. Um, but I couldn't quite work out whose it was. It's got this T on the bottom with this blue splash of colour over it. A brown and green sort of glaze. I thought, hmm, I don't know. T, what's that? And I thought, well, it looks a bit like the Ipswich um, pottery, but T, that's thrown me a little bit. How am I going to work out who this is? So I got onto one of the, the Facebook groups of Australian Pottery, put a photo up, and immediately people came back saying, it's Diana. And I was like, what's a Diana? <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Because I'm new to this, I don't know all of the Australian Potteries and I can't identify them. So I did some research instead. <laughs> Um, so the Diana Pottery was established in 1941 in Marrickville in New South Wales. In 1939, Eric Cornwall Lowe uh, established, he registered a business under his own name where he imported Czechoslovakian and German pottery and glassware. And then it sort of, the business grew from there and Diana Pottery was started. And from what I can gather, this is probably one of the earlier pieces. Even knowing that it's Diana, at least I'm assuming it is, given that people who are in the know have got back to me straight away saying, yes, it definitely is. Um, even knowing that, looking at other photos of Diana Pottery, I can't see quite the resemblance. So I will have to take the word of the people who actually know stuff. Uh, so Diana, Diana Pottery was apparently like the pottery company in Australia in like the 60s and 70s, which is before my time, so I'm going to use that as my excuse as why I don't know them. Uh, and it, it ended around 1975, so this is definitely a vintage piece regardless of um, whether it was an earlier piece or not, which is suspected that it is an earlier piece. It's got a little bit of, um, I'm going to call it crazing, it doesn't look exactly like crazing, it's, I don't think it's going to pick up on the on the video anyway, it's only when it's in, um, in really good light that you can see it. Still a great piece! I like the shape of it, with this nice profile, I guess. Now this one here is another vase, obviously, but I, I haven't been able to attribute this to a particular maker. There are no marks on the bottom of it. It's obviously a handmade piece. No marks on the bottom, so I can't say for sure who it is. Um, a lot of potteries have used stickers over the years to identify their their artwork which in my opinion is really silly because stickers come off very easily <laughs> and so when you're looking at it 40 years down the track it's it makes it very hard to identify who it belongs to who's made this so i might put the photo of this up on the Australian Pottery Facebook group and see if somebody comes back saying, duh, it's obviously or whatever, and then I'll sit there sheepishly feeling a little bit silly because apparently it's obvious. Um, and if you happen to know who 
would have created this this vase or which pottery it has come from then please do put in the description your suspicions anyways continuing with the Australian pottery I have got this urn style vase or or just a decorative urn piece it it took me a little while to work out what it said on the bottom I'm not sure if it's going to pick up there for you or not but it says oh, maybe just there Carol Melbourne I thought, what's a Carol? <laughs> again I'm not really up with it I don't know all of the things so again did some research the company Carol was started by Alan Edgar James and the story goes a little bit further back than that when he was 17 he was offered a job at the premier Preston uh, pottery and then in the early 1950s he started making things at home out of his backyard and they bore quite a resemblance to the creations that were in vogue um, at the premier pottery. Then I, I found the information that I got was a little bit difficult to follow because it sort of jumped all over the place and didn't have dates and it was a little bit difficult to follow but this is what I what I've got from it so the, the premier pottery in Preston ended in the 1950s, the mid-1950s, and then Carol um, was begun in 1958 and continued until 1980. Um, Carol, it is believed, was the name, came from... Uh, Alan and Myrtle, his wife, their son's name, which is Kerry. So the suspicion is that it was named for the son, but I think it's probably actually a combination of the son and the wife because Myrtle, the wife's name, Kerry, combine the two and you get Carol. But that's my opinion on it, and I could be very wrong. So this is somewhere between 1958 and 1980. So another vintage piece, which is cool. Then I'm going to continue with the pottery and show you these pieces. I have got three pieces here that are marked L-I-N on the bottom. Now, I have not been able to find any references to an L-I-N, Lin, I would say, um, anywhere, and I've asked around on the Australian Pottery groups, and nobody's come back to me saying, oh, of course, it's such and such. So I suspect maybe these are actually a student piece. or pieces, as the case actually is. I think this one's my favourite of them. They're quite dark pieces, and this one's the, the lighter, brighter of the pieces. But this one's got quite a nice shine to it as well. And there we go, there's the, the L-I-N again. So a little bit hard for me to definitely say, but they're still pretty groovy. Unfortunately, this one has got a couple of chips in the spout. There's a little bit just here and a little bit there, but still a nice decorative piece. I'm not sure that they would actually be used. And it's a little bit wonky, which makes me think that it's probably a student piece although it could also just be quirky. 
in the same section of the house that I picked up those LIN pottery bits, I also found this, which has a very, very similar look. It's got that dark look to it, but it is not marked. No marks on it at all. So I wonder whether it is made by the same person, though this looks a little more refined than the other pieces. The others are a little more, I suppose, clunky. Whereas this is really quite smooth. It's got more of a professional finish. If you happen to be watching this and thinking, ah, oh, Rebecca, it's a such and such pottery. How don't you know that? It's so obvious. <laughs> then please do put that in the comments below and then I can um, update that on this, on this video. And then I will know when I go to list these items because these are not things that I'm going to keep for myself. These will be things that I will pass on to someone else. I will list them in my eBay store which um, I will put a link in the description for that, as I always do. And I'm sure somebody out there is going to love them, because they are still pretty cool. So, next I have got this little Holly Hobby dish. A, a trinket dish or a jewelry dish or maybe a pin dish it says on it happiness is having someone to care for which is quite cute um, now I didn't really know anything about Holly Hobby I know there was this um, a birthday calendar like a, a poster that hung on the back of the toilet door for years and years and years until we did the renovations last year. I think it was last year, maybe early this year? Surely it's last year. Anyway, time's getting by and 2020 is hard to follow what happened when, seeing as we're all locked down and all over the place and nobody's in their standard routine. Anyway, back to the point. So this is Holly Hobby. We always had that calendar and I think there's something else in the house that's also Holly Hobby. And so I did a quick Google search and went, oh, well there you go. Looked at the information. So Holly Hobby, the person, is an American writer, uh, watercolorist and illustrator. So she created the character Holly Hobby, which is also her name, uh, which is, I don't have a photo of the original character. Anyway, the original character is the, the girl with the blue bonnet and the, the rag dress, who was also known earlier on as the blue girl. So that character was created in the late 1960s and that character, not this one, the other one, was used for greeting cards and things and then the brand sort of continued so then there became uh, the doll line and then much later on there were TV series and films and things that were created, which most of that was in the early 2000s, which was actually in my time and I've never heard of them. I was born in 95, so I was actually, you know, the right sort of age to be watching Holly Hobby things, but I've never heard of them, so I wonder whether they were only aired in America. Apparently the, um, Nickelodeon was in on one of the, the series, so perhaps it was American only thing or only came out on DVD and I've just never heard of it. Perhaps they didn't um, sell the DVD in Australia. So this is a, it's a transfer piece, of course. So this character, um, I believe from what I've seen, is Carrie. 
So this girl is named Carrie, and she has got with her her cat. Is it going to focus for me? Probably not. There we go. Her cat named Bonnie. I think Holly Hobby stuff is really quite cute. And it's a little bit collectible, not hugely, at least not in Australia. Uh, but this is very sweet. Given that it's only a little trinket dish, it's probably not worth more than three or four dollars. Uh, it's got a date on the back, which is in Roman numerals, which is 1974. Four? Is it four? Yes, 1974. <laughs> so just a nice, cute, sweet piece. And I wonder if I've got some other pieces that I can bundle this up with to sell together. I'll have a think on it. I'll see if I can dig out some Holly Hobby bits from our own collections. Now, um, I've been listing quite a few purses on my eBay store, which again, I'll put the link in the description for that. This is another little... I suppose you'd call it a purse that I found. It's got these great beads. Unfortunately, it's a little bit stained. And I wouldn't say it's super duper old, probably like, I don't know, 70s maybe? Given the style of zip. Um, possibly a handmade piece with a bit of fabric, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I think I will put this in as a a bit of a bonus extra with one or one of the um, the purses that I sell. I've got some nice vintage purses that are for sale. I've shown those in some recent videos. So there's a, a nice red purse with a kiss lock latch on the top and there's a nice tapestry one as well. Which I think they may have been in the last video which was a the, the prequel to this video which was looking through the, the stuff category which I should probably explain to you so these items have all come from a house clean out that I did I sorted all the items into glassware and kitchenware and bits and pieces so this is the stuff section I will put a link in the description for the, the previous video uh, so you can have a look at that as well and see what else came in the stuff section. I've got these. Now I am sure that I found some information about these early on. So uh, like not long after I brought these home which was the end of May. But I cannot for the life of me find that information again. So I've got a nice blue one and a pink one. They are matchy matchy. On the bottom, this one's the clearer one. There is written this code, which I can't remember if it is UIG3 or U1G3 or UI63 or, you know, any other combination that you can get from those. And for the life of me, I can't find them again. So I, I've searched for hours and hours, and I've put them on um, some groups online, on Facebook, to see if someone else can help me to identify them, but who knows. Um, they're quite nice. They're in excellent condition. So I think I will just list them as blue and pink. I'll put them together. Blue and pink jugs. I'd say they're probably milk jugs. Yeah, probably milk jugs. I think they'll list them just as that. In this box I have got a set of weigh scales, like kitchen scales. So everybody, everything is there in the original box. These are vintage and I can't work out quite exactly what the date would be on them. 
looking at the um, the pictures on the box, I'm guessing probably 80s, maybe early 90s. They're there and they work. I've tested them, I guess, against my um, digital scales as well. So they're pretty groovy. I don't need them though, so I won't be hanging on to them. They will appear in uh, my eBay store at some point in the nearish future. And then last, I have got for you, these are fantastic. These eye baths, or eye washes, depending on um, how you call them. There we go. I really like the detailing on this one, but I love the stem on this one. These are obviously quite old, they're vintage pieces. And I would say that together these are probably worth around $30 or $35. And I will sell them together as a set. Try and make it worthwhile the postage, which is always a bit of a killer with, um, with the sales that I make. And I just do the best that I possibly can with the, the prices. So anyway, that brings this video to a conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button below, put a comment if you'd like to have a chat or if you have anything you'd like to add about any of the items in the video or about the videos themselves. Um, have a look at my Facebook page and my Instagram page. I put updates there on a regular basis, usually every, every couple of days, of things that have um, been listed, of videos that are coming out, things like that. Um, subscribe to this page if you're interested so you can catch up on all the interesting things that come up and have a look at my eBay store where I sell some of the great things that I find. There are some fantastic things listed at the moment so check those out. Anyway, I hope you're all well, staying safe and um, take care. I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!